they're getting upset with me and calling calling my testimony into question because I'm not a Calvinist because right. I don't believe in their version of the sovereignty of God and like, vice versa. Yeah. I think that there is a tendency in American Protestantism to focus on a third category of beliefs that we haven't talked about yet that I call denominational distinctives. Mm. Um, often they're called secondary beliefs, but I prefer the term denominational distinctives because I think then, you know, we're talking about things like the rapture, the seven year tribulation. Do we baptize babies versus believers? And that means am I a Baptist or a Presbyterian? You know, mm -hmm. so these are things that we can explore. We can have a robust debate about. We can. Um, that's an in-house conversation between mm -hmm. Christians. But but differentiating between these these essentials, what I call core beliefs, and also convictions versus denominational distinctives. But there's so much emphasis these days on denominational distinctives mm -hmm. that if you don't hold to, let's say, the reform view of predestination, well, I'm going to put you on a discernment blog right. and, and call you out. Yes. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, th that's a denominational distinctive. Mm -hmm. Let's differentiate between that. We can have a robust discussion yes. about it. We can have a, a Bible study, you know, we can read some books together and talk about it. But let's differentiate that from the rule of faith, from the Apostles' Creed, from from these things that we've been talking about yeah. as core, core beliefs and convictions. And I think that the I'd really love to camp here for a minute because I, I think this point that you've brought up is hugely important because... I, I see, and I even wrote about this in my book, that I get very um, discouraged when I see Christians attacking other Christians over, again, not unimportant things. Yeah. But we're, they're going to call someone a false teacher over what is more of a denominational distinctive, even something I may disagree with and may even choose not to attend a church that believes that. Right. So dividing in that sense, but not as a brother or sister in Christ. Um, but the calling people false teachers over these things, there's one in particular that many people emailed me, isn't this person a false teacher? Isn't this person? And every time I would say, well, show me what it is they're teaching that's false. And it, lit it came down to that it was a woman who had taught with men in the room and that she leaned more uh, to the charismatic side of things. Um, well, I grew up in a denomination that ordained female pastors. Now, it's my position now. I disagree with that. I think that's incorrect. Um, but they gave me the gospel. And I can't deny that. They gave me the real gospel. And I disagree with them on some things now. And I think they're important. I'm not saying that it's just, you know, this one bucket and then everything else, whatever. We just agree to disagree. No, it's let's let's have those debates. Let's, yeah. let's fight for what's biblically true. But um, I can't call someone a false teacher because they believe that God spoke to them or that um, and I, of course, I want to be very careful what I mean by that. I, you know, we're, I'm not talking about new revelation where somebody thinks they're preaching, you know, yeah. like writing more scripture, but just God saying, hey, I, I, I think you should go down this path or something right. like that. Um, and, you know, and I just, it's like I, they never were able to show me anything other than that. And so it's like, well, no, I can't call this person a false teacher well first of all it's not I don't have authority to do that anyway right but um it's like this this overreaction really it doesn't mean I mean maybe you choose not to listen to that teacher yeah. maybe you go this isn't good for me I want to go more over here where I feel like this is more biblically sound but I think this is where it's so important um, because a lot of people I think they grew up hearing one thing and then if they hear something different from that it sends up a red flag and that red flag may be legit, but it also just might be that you just never heard this before. And that's the thing is, I, I think if, if something is a red flag for you, you know, you're sitting at coffee, your friend brings up a teaching and you're like, whoa, I don't know what to think about that. Mm -hmm. You have to have enough discernment to think through, all right, are we talking about something that is in the Nicene Creed or in the rule of faith or in the, could, could, are they redefining marriage? You know, mm -hmm. is it a conviction like going against some of these other more modern creedal statements 
Or are we talking about like they're getting upset with me and calling calling my testimony into question because I'm not a Calvinist, because right. I don't believe in their version of the sovereignty of God. And like, vice versa. Yeah. Non-Calvinists do it too. They'll Absolutely. say, well, they're a false teacher because they're a Calvinist yeah. or something like that. So we have to discern, like, am I talking about a denominational distinctive or am I talking about a core belief or a conviction? Mm -hmm. And so slowing the conversation down, maybe researching it, figuring it out. What are we talking about here? Because if I've grown up my whole life being a Baptist and then I meet somebody who's an Anglican and they're talking about baptizing babies. Well, if I immediately get in a posture of offense mm. because I've never heard that before, well, that must be heretical. All right, let's, let's slow down and investigate mm -hmm. and ask some questions and figure out what we're talking about. Yeah. So that, that is a very, very important. And again, not to say that these things won't have differences and that they're not worthy of a conversation. I am not for theological minimalism of, well, as long as you name the name of Jesus, everything's yeah. cool. That's, yeah. that's not what right. I'm, I'm saying. Um, but really being careful how we're throwing around the H word of heresy. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, you made a, a side comment of like, I don't think that's really my role anyways. I would agree with that. I mean, I, I'm not a bishop. I'm not an ordained minister. I don't, on my channel, spend a lot of time calling people out as heretics. Now, I might say something like, this belief is out of step with historic Christianity, mm -hmm. or this belief seems aberrant, but I try not to use the label of heretic because I'm not a bishop. I, mm -hmm. I've, I haven't been given that role in Christ's body. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I try to defer to people who, yeah. you know, the Lord has put in charge of, mm -hmm. of those conversations. I can contribute. I can have an opinion, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. I, I, I think we have to be careful about how we throw around that word. Yeah.